What's up everybody, Troll here. Today, I'm going to show you how you can implement specification parent in your application. We use specification parent mostly for complex business logics. If you have complex business domain, if you want to divide your complex business logics into smaller components and combine them into huge ones. And of course, if you want to extend your business logic, to test your business logic, to compose com smaller business logics into big ones, you're actively using specification parent. And my main focus here to not to use the third part library to show you you easily how you can write your own specification parent and also how you can easily divide your complex business logic into reusable components combine them orchestrate them and test them so what are you waiting for let's get started in order to implement specification parent, I will create a simple console application here. So let's right click, add new project. And from the list, let's select our console application. And I will call it specification app. Okay, that's simply it. And I will use, I can use .NET 10, you can use .NET 9, 7, doesn't actually matter because the specification parent implementation is not tightly coupled to any .NET framework version. Okay. And first of all, before implementing specification parent, I want to show you what is the problem and how we can solve this problem using specification parent. Say I have a simple account class and for my account, I have is active and I have public decimal amount. Okay. That's really simple class. And if I want to have some logic over my account, first I need to create my account. Say I have received a business logic implementation for my account to be active and the amount greater than 3000. So my approach is to write if account is active and account that amount greater than 3000. And in my another class, I have received another request to check account again, but with amount greater than 5000. You say this is a really simple business logic, but in your applications, you mostly deal with such type of if else's and your ifs can be huge with checking multiple properties of account with nested ifs. And for this purpose, for not to write the same business logic again and again, like this, for example, I have typed account.active twice and account.amount greater than logic also I typed twice because I'm just checking greater than 3000 or 5000. It actually doesn't matter because this is our argument, but still we are using, we are typing the same business logic again and again. So our specification parent will help us to divide our business logic into smaller checkable components. So you will have one component for account.active to check another component for account.amount like this. I will create per class for my logic to have is active. I will have active account specification. Okay. And I will write and new account amount specification with the given value like 3000. This is my specification and I will validate my specification if it is satisfied. Satisfied. Okay. That's all. And for the, this is for our first if. Instead of writing if like this, you are dividing your if into smaller business logic components. The first component will be called, let's call the component here is specification. You will divide your smaller conditions into smaller specifications. This is our account active specification 
and this is our and and account amount specification 3000 is this one so instead of writing this you will write something like this for the if is active and greater than 5000 you will just do like this you are reusing your component again but with different value that's how you are avoiding business code repetition process this is how you can build complex compose your uh, specifications into huge specifications for example this is one specification this is another specification i'm combining them into a bigger specification okay we are using composite design parent behind the behind the scenes and this helps us to easily test our code. You don't need to add breakpoint to check if this if is working or not. You will test this one, this one separately. If they are working, it means the combination also will work. Okay, that's how we are planning to implement our specification. But how we can implement it? To implement it, I will create a separate folder called specification parent specification let's call implementation i will right click add new item and we'll call it i specification i will create an interface okay i specification with generic t because i can uh, attach the specification to any object of mine in my application i may have account transaction user etc so the specification is not tightly coupled to account we can reuse it that's why i'm creating a generic class here and i will have something like this um, boolean is satisfied the, the satisfied function satisfied by let's call it satisfied by this is our entity because for your combination you are combining your specifications into huge one and you are calling it is satisfied which will call your composite uh, it will do uh, something like a recursive operation it will validate all the left and right side of your specifications and will return true or false if the driven given business logic is valid and to build this business logic i'm using the expression if you want to learn more about expression trees you can check my tutorial related to expression trees where i explain all the related all the uh, main functions of expression trees and their main purpose so i will create func to boolean and i will call this method as expression or to expression that's total okay as expression cool now i have satisfied and as expression because i will use as expression inside my is satisfied that's why i'm creating another public abstract class called specification base with generic t inherit by i specification t and let's implement the given methods i actually don't know how our uh, related objects will use this as expression that's why i'm providing it as an abstract method okay but i exactly know how to call is satisfied that's really easy you will call as expression uh, you will compile it okay and give your entity as an argument you can uh, make it easy to get first the compiled expression and return expression and that's also total okay to write like this okay and what i need i have and or not based specifications for my and specification i am going to create public class and specification and specification inherits from our specification base it is also t because i don't know which type it is for now 
Okay, let's implement our AND specification. To have AND specification, AND is working like this. You, ha you have left side and right side for your AND. That's why I'm providing private read only I specification T, left specification and private read only I specification, right specification. Let's create our constructor. Okay, let's provide our left side with right side to our constructor. That's cool. Okay, and what we are missing here, I think this should be the public. Mm -hmm. Cool. For as expression, I will definitely get as expression from left side and right side. So I will type like left equal to left specification dot as expression var right equal right and I need to give my argument the t parameter to my expression to evaluate it that's why I'm creating my param here this is going to be expression dot parameter type of t and we need our body with expression dot and also Let's give our expression in walk, in walk left with parameter and with right parameter. Okay, that sounds, expression is not nullable here. Okay, uh, okay, let's check what's wrong here. Expression and also, cool, expression in walk. Ah. Okay, and let's return expression expression that lambda to our func t boolean and our body with parameter. Okay, that's how we are checking. Argument is missing. Cool. <laughs> let's see. So left, right. I guess yes. That that should be. Okay, what we're doing here, we have left specification, right specification, we are getting expression tree, uh, expression from this left and right, and we are providing our T to evaluate to be executed by our expressions. This expression based logic will help you in the future to map your specification to link you to entity framework, to dapper and more, okay? That's really cool stuff. You are not just working with in memory, but you can work with external queryable interface based elements. So is um, satisfied by will help you to evaluate this query in memory, but as expression will help you to get it as expression and to send this expression through tree to different third part libraries like entity framework and other stuff. Cool. Now we have and I'm just going to copy and create or specification from it. And this is our or specification for or I'm just going to use expression or else. Okay, for the same way you can implement your not the not expression will accept only one specification and expression not will help you to work on it. Okay, cool. Now we have every main component. Of course, I have implemented the simplest specification for the third part libraries, NuGet packages, you will see more complex implementation. But to understand the specification, I think this logic will be enough. Cool. Now let's switch to our business logic. I have account, uh, active account specification. Let's create it. Public class. Um, active account specification. The purpose of active account specification is to call account is active and to check if it is active or not. I will inherit from specification base and I will exactly provide my account and let's override as expression and return x x is active. This is our active account specification. So you see for active uh, account.active, I have moved these into my separate class. Okay, for the account.amount, I will do the same stuff. 
public class. Let's copy account amount specification and inherit from specification base account. And I will do overwrite as specification. Okay, come on, come on. As specification. And you can simply call e e dot amount greater than given value right now i don't have a value to provide so that's why i'm creating private read only decimal amount and this is our decimal amount okay and this is our amount equal to amount well and here is our amount cool you see i have separated my if else logic into a my own classes now for every logic i have my own specification and we have the specification combiner here i will use i can of course implement this and or directly in my specification interface but i think it would be better to implement it separately to have extension method public static class specification extensions and public static i specification t and t this i specification t left i specification t right and let's just simply call new and specification with left and right and let's do the same stuff for our or and we'll call our or specification cool now the logic is properly working is satisfied by and let's give our account okay that's how you are using specification pairing in your application you see the main purpose here to not to repeat our business logic again and again to divide our complex business logic into smaller units called specification and using composite parent to composite them to create a huge a bigger business logic combination and it will help us to extend our business logic to test it to reuse it that's how we are exactly using specification parent okay now i am going to create an account here my account is active and amount is 4000 for now i'm just going to comment this out okay and if everything is working uh, valid um, rules so what we did we actually create our rules engine okay console right line let's write it like this invalid and console read line let's run our application and to see if our um, rules are valid or not let's run it and valid rules you see everything is valid because we divided our if else into smaller one we combined them using composite parent into specification and that helped us a lot to build really complex business logic that's how you are using specification parent in your practice well that's pretty much all if you like my videos please don't forget to subscribe and i will see you in the next tutorials bye